On business tonight, Nigeria's central bank governor says inflation to fall to single digit in mid-2018. Nigeria to witness surge in air travel by 2030. FBI, UK financial regulator, FCA opens investigation into links to South Africa's Guptas and Euro European Union Bank to owe UK billions for decades after Brexit. Nigeria's inflation will fall to single digits next year. Well, good news in the air. Uh, the country's central bank governor, Governor Mifiele, gave this latest on Friday on the sidelines of an investment conference at the London Stock Exchange. Mifiele is optimistic that food prices will come down and help complement the reduction in core inflation. He says around 9% will be a good target. And annual inflation in Nigeria slowed for, eighth, uh, for an eighth month in September September easing to 15.98%. Nigeria, which has Africa's largest economy, emerged from its first recession in 25 years in the second quarter as oil revenues rose. But the slow pace of growth suggests the recovery remains fragile. Economist Osila Maokofu joins me via Skype to discuss this latest and other interbank money market issues. Many thanks for your time, uh, Osilama. Thanks. Thanks. thanks yes. For yes. First off, let me get your reaction to this latest uh, from the CBN governor. He spoke this on the sidelines of the London Stock Exchange that Nigeria will have an inflation, a single digit inflation by mid 2018. Uh, like you said during your analysis, it's, um, it's a welcome development if it does happen. Uh, I mean, that is what essentially the, the central bank through the Monetary Policy Committee has been targeting uh, it's it's good it's good for investment but like i've always said uh, it, it, it will come at the expense of growth um, single digit inflation when our infrastructures are decadent and to, to, to a large extent non-existent um, is not is not good for us is it achievable very achievable i mean in economy that's what we refer to as a self-fulfilling you know, prophecy when you believe that something is going to happen over time, you consciously and unconsciously work towards it, and it does come to pass. Um, this is going to it's going to happen, but but like I said, and I've stated during several opportunities like this that I've had, um, it is coming at the expense of expense of growth. And at this stage in our developmental lives, we don't we don't need this. Inflation targeting shouldn't really be our focus. Even if it does happen, I can assure you to be to be nominal inflation uh, inflation reduction, not not real, because in economy we're talking we're talking terms of real and, and nominal terms, you know. Um, but but yeah, like you said, it's good. Um, let's see how food inflation, which is actually even the most important uh, aspect of it all, would you know, come down so that Nigerians, when they go to the market to buy. Uh, their basket of goods and services, uh, they won't really push themselves or you know, break the bank to, to do that. Yes, I know, Silama, the last time we spoke, you said that you wanted the CBN to actually reduce uh, interest rates from 14% that it has it now. And yes, he's optimistic that food prices will go down to help complement uh, the reduction in core inflation. But the CBN is still holding its, its benchmark interest rate at 14%. How do we achieve this? 14.5, uh, actually. Is optimism, yeah. Yeah, 14.5, actually. Um, but like I said, I mean, we we're talking about the government. The government can achieve anything it really wants to achieve. Now, a situation where the central bank is holding uh, base rate at 14.5, cash reserve ratio at 22.5, and then you have the federal government, which is the fiscal leg, saying they will not, they're going to roll over 60% of the capital budget to next year. What it tells you is that they, they, they are pursuing a strategic policy of uh, contracting the, the economy, They're squeezing the economy. So, so that you don't have, in quote, excess funds out there, you know, which 
under normal circumstances, if we, if we want to define what, what inflation is, you have too much money pursuing too few goods. In this case, when you now strangulate the economy as it were, of course, inflation will, will, will come down because you have few little money, you know, in circulation. But like I said, and I'm, I'm emphasizing it, it's not good for growth. And we don't need this at this point in time. Um, it can be achieved, it can be done, but it will be nominal, it won't be real. Like I said during the last time you are, you are, you, I, I, I was with you, I, actually, I did suggest that the, the central bank should reduce the monetary policy rates by some basis points, essentially because of the fact that uh, the economy is strangulated right now. The deposit money banks need money to, to loan, to give to investors, you know, to carry their business activities. That is how you grow an economy. My problem with um, the central bank's monetary policy committee is we are focused on copying and pasting what the Bank of England's monetary policy committee is doing. We forget that our situation and jazz, I mean, they are not the same. The British economy has reached the peak. It has reached its zenith. The only way is down. Ours is just, well, we were just trying to, you know, develop our infrastructures, you know, enhance growth, ensure that uh, uh, employment, you know, is, is, is beefed up. But you don't achieve that with the kind of policies that we see being churned out both from the fiscal and, and the monetary legs. All right, let's briefly, let's quickly talk about the, the, the persistence of scarcity of funds in the interbank money market. Uh, we've witnessed that last week and also this week, but the CBN continues to intervene with its injection. Do you think that this can be aggravated and do we see any negative uh, impacts in that? Um, well, I mean, if, if, if you have scarcity of funds, I mean, it, this just throws back, goes back to what, what I said. If, 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 there's, if, there's a, if there's a squeeze in the market, uh, essentially what the, the central bank from what you have said is doing is you know, pumping in funds into the, into the economy. It's, it's good, but these are just uh, stopgap measures, they are short term, very, very short term measures, which I mean, they are not lasting. What we need are more lasting, far reaching solutions that will kickstart and jumpstart this economy, you know, such that the deposit money banks will be well placed to play their role and not the central bank doing all that. And then investors can, you know, uh, bring their natural talents into play and, and, and help, grow this, help grow this economy. But when we now keep doing all these um, kick and sport measures, you know, it's not going to help our economy. It's not, it's not going to help, help us on the long run. All right. Economist Osila Maokofu, thank you for your take on business tonight. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Well, the Nigerian stock market pointed south, closing the week negative. Osher index was down by minus 0.15%. Efion Gekop breaks down the numbers. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, has commenced exploration activities in the Benue Troll. NNPC Group Managing Director Meikanti Baru announced this development during a visit to the governor of Nasarawa State. This development is in line with the presidential mandate directing NNPC to resume oil exploration activities in some of the nation's inland basins. It says that through NNPC Frontier Exploration Services, the organization will operate peacefully among the people and with much respect to the environment. You're watching Business Tonight. We'll come up with more after the break. International Air Transport Association, IATA, and the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, are projecting that the global air travel will double by 2020 and called on all countries around the world to prepare for the increase. 
Already, the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, NCAA, is preparing the sector to develop the capacity and infrastructure that will enable it to accommodate the expected passenger surge. The DG NCAA, Captain Mota Husman, says Nigeria was well positioned to contribute to the expected surge in the area of regulation. It says government was poised to provide airport facilities that will enhance air travel, just as the country aspires to become a hub for the Western and Central Africa before the projected period. According to IATA, global air passenger travel in 2016 was 3.7 3 billion. Now the traffic rose 6.3% when compared to 2015. Agriculture Minister Aldo Ogbe says consultations will soon be held with the United Kingdom to guard against future rejection of Nigerian exports. The minister was speaking against the backdrop of criticisms which trailed reports of the rejection of the country's yam exports at their destinations. Uh, the yam export was carried out at an elaborate ceremony in Lagos earlier this year and many then feared the development could lead to yam shortages in the country. Whatever you want to send out, make sure it meets the standards. Make sure we are not embarrassed. Make sure it is the best. Because our future depends on agro-exports and solid minerals. Agriculture is the nearest one. And for you younger people in particular, don't allow mischief makers to spoil your business. When they talk, attack them back. Especially when they talk out of mischief. I'm not an exporter myself. So even if they went to court, I have not exported anything. But I'm supporting those who are exporting. Well, modern technology is critical to improving Nigeria's agriculture value chain and the country needs to act fast in adapting this mechanism which can potentially change its economic fortunes. An assistant director with the National Biotechnology Development Agency highlights the many benefits of biotechnology to the agricultural value chain. Technology can help to promote value chain in our culture. One, let's take example with the tomato. With biotechnology, you can develop a tomato with longer shelf life. And once you develop it, you, ha you have it with longer shelf life. Of course, you've taken care of so many things, losses, you know, because it won't get rotten for some number of maybe like two weeks or one month. You can, without like putting it in the fridge or what. And then it will also help in making it um, withstand mechanical damage, you know, during transportation. You know, most Nigerian roads are not much, I mean, much rebel. They are bad. And this is a problem to the farmers. Once you have your strong yields, aside from the strong yields that you've had in your farm, you have to transport it from your farm to wherever, either to your house or to your storage facility. Of course, those back roads, sometimes the car would break down, you know, and very, very important. Biotech usage in this, in agriculture, in the value chain, it's very, very key. It's um, very economical because no value that will be added that will not go with cost. It, it, because it will earn you more money. Anything that you have added to that will earn you more money and the farmer gets empowered. You are giving him nutrition, you are giving him money. You know? So it's, it's quite um, very useful, it's very beneficial, and it will help in our own economy, in our GDP growth, it will help. We are also assured of market, because if there's no market, then you have not said, because once that value is added and there's market. So in Brazil, this thing is going on. In Argentina, it's the same thing. In US, it's the same thing. In India, is the same thing in China. China is perfecting this technology and they want to overtake uh, US. So India is the highest in terms of in BT cotton and they are growing very fast. The adoption rate is on the increase. What do we have to gain? Of course, um, we'll be able to export. We export our crops, our grains, and they will not be rejected.
The FBI has opened an investigation into U.S. links to South Africa's Guptas, escalating a scandal over the family's alleged use of a friendship with President Jacob Zuma to control state businesses. Also, Britain's banking regulator, the Financial Conduct Authority, FCA, said it was in contact with two UK banks over any possible links to the family. But what's this scandal causing the South African economy and Zuma presidency? Barakel Okuta reports. The former UK government minister and anti-apartheid campaigner Peter Hain reported the allegations to the FCA after he said he was given the information by South African whistleblowers. Banks and also, can I add, Baroda Bank, each of which expert South African whistleblowers have told me must have been conduits for the corrupt <coughs> proceeds of money stolen from their taxpayers and laundered through Dubai and Hong Kong. But the Gupta and President Jacob Zuma have denied any wrongdoing. Gupta family spokesman Gary Naidu could not be reached for comment and the U.S. Embassy in Pretoria had no immediate comment. If there is any... In uh, information suggesting corruption uh, or irregularities, it needs to be investigated across the borders. It does not need to be restricted to South Africa. We may not be aware of the exact uh, issues that relate to companies that are working in South Africa who are operating in other countries, but we would welcome any information that might help to share uh, such a light in terms of what is happening in our country if it arose from other, from other countries. The family, founders of a business empire spanning media, mining and consulting, have been named in a trove of leaked emails alleging graft in dealing with South Africa's state-owned companies, which also named several global firms. The Financial Times, which cited people familiar with the matter, said U.S. investigators had been looking at individuals, bank accounts, and companies in the U.S. for ties to alleged graft involving the family. Standard Chartered in London said they were not able to comment on details of clients' transactions, but added that after an internal investigation, accounts were closed. The Gupta their companies have not been charged with any crime in South Africa, but the scandal is one of many that have dogged the Zuma presidency. Barakel Ukuta, TVC News. You're watching Business Tonight. After the break, it may not be an easy one for Britain to leave the EU, as European banks will be hoeing UK billions uh, for decades after Brexit. The United Kingdom has been warned that billions of dollars of Britain's taxpayers' money could remain locked in an EU bank for more than 30 years after Brexit. The European Investment Bank uses capital provided by EU countries to make loans at low rates, often for major infrastructure projects. The UK has more than $4 billion worth of capital at the EU bank, and the House of Lords report UK's investment could be worth about $12 billion, taking into account reserves and profits. All 28 EU nations are shareholders in the Luxembourg-based bank, with the UK being the largest alongside Germany, France and Italy. The US economy expanded more than expected at an annual pace of 3% during the three months to the end of September. A gross domestic product increased at a 3% annual rate in July-September period after expanding at a 3.1% pace in the second quarter. Well, analysts say the growth is as a result of the increase in inventory investment, export and federal government spending. The U.S. Central Bank is expected to increase interest rates for a third time this year in December. A well, German car maker Volkswagen has reported a 15% jump in third quarter profit to $5 billion. The 2015 diesel scandal has cost the car maker about $16 billion so far this year. And the latest figures show Volkswagen continues to hit profits. 
Its third quarter sales revenues were $63 billion, up by $3 billion harvested in the same quarter last year. Volkswagen is still facing billions of dollars in compensation and fines after admitting to cheating on diesel emissions tests. Well, social network company Twitter is reporting better than expected user growth. Its monthly active users grew by 4 million to a total of 330 million at the end of last year. The social network, which has not posted a profit since going public four years ago, narrowed its losses from $103 million to $21 million in the third quarter. The company's shares jumped by almost 14% in early trade, raising its earnings forecast for the fourth quarter. Twitter says the better-than-expected sales were driven by its video advertising and data licensing platforms. A crude oil prices hit a two-year high Friday following comments by Saudi Arabia's Prince Mohammed bin Salman that Aramco initial public offering is still on track for takeoff in the second half of next year. At the London market, the Brent crude trades at $59 a barrel and for the OPEC basket brand, price moves up to $56 a barrel. And that's business tonight. Many thanks for watching. I am Yemisi Landredo. Good night.